All right, our next guest says markets might be facing a little indigestion after its recent run. Let's bring in Lori Calvacina of RBC Capital Markets. She joins us now. Lori, good to see you. Um, I'm going to start off by asking you what your one word is. What I mean, what's and I won't ask you for yeah. today because your strategies. But you know, the year-to-day rally that we've seen so far, the run that we've seen. Well, how would you characterize it? It's actually the word that jumps to mind is dominoes. And I think this yeah. idea that we've priced in all the earnings pain into the broad market uniformly doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think it's been priced in like one one domino after another, and some dominoes have fallen. The tech stocks, the growth stocks, um, small caps, I think we worked earnings expectations down last year. You're seeing better performance there. You're seeing worse performance from areas that had been resilient, like financials and energy. They've got to take their lumps right now. We've got to get some of those numbers down. So I think this is a messy, choppy market. But what makes sense to me is the idea, the dominoes that fell last year, those are doing okay right now. The dominoes that are in the process of falling, that's what's not acting so well right now. Right. You do make the point that we've seen a lot of earnings revisions lower so far for 2023. And that's probably a good thing for the markets. Yeah. And look, I think we've still got some wood to chop. I don't think we're done. I think there are a few dominoes left to fall. And my number is well below consensus. But, you know, we have some analysis where we've shown this is the fastest pace of earnings downgrade. If you take the the bottom up sell side numbers since 2009. We're all beating up on the sell side analysts, myself included, but they have been, you know, doing the work. It's just we've got a little bit more to go. How do you know when all the dominoes have fallen, though? And I asked, I, I posed this to Grasa before. I mean, if the Fed's rate hikes have lag effects and we won't know, we won't know necessarily. I mean, what is a stress, stress test case? Is it 5% for a year? And how do companies do and how are earnings estimates at that point? How will we know? It is going to be a show me story to some extent. And if you look historically, most of the time when we see earnings fall, those downgrades are done by March or April. And so we're really not going to know until we get to the next reporting season whether or not estimates are able to be you know, surpassed in some instances. Hey, Lori, it's Jeff Mills. So just a question a little bit about positioning. You know, you've mentioned small cap, so maybe get into that a little bit more. I think that's an interesting area. And, you know, is that view sort of predicated upon you want to be away from the top of the market, the mega cap tech, things of that nature? So I think for me, if we think about the small cap part of the market, it was pretty clear to me at the June lows last year that they were pricing in a recession already. If you looked at small versus large performance, it was acting like ISM manufacturing was already at 39, sort of close to typical troughs. Um, I think the other thing that we've seen with small caps is their earnings have been holding up a little bit better than large caps in terms of forward revisions because they haven't had the currency impacts. And we've also seen that you're getting in some areas like consumer discretionary or financials slightly easier easier stories to digest. Regional banks are a whole lot more appealing fundamentally right now than, say, uh, big cap investment banks, which have a lot of hair from an international perspective and a trading perspective. Um, But I think, bottom line, the valuations are cheap. They priced in recession very, very early. And I think they're getting the benefit of inflows right now. We're seeing almost every sector in small cap outperforming its large cap counterpart right now. So, Lori, would you? I agree on the analyst side, and I think that analysts are sort of getting pushed around, yeah. and they're trying to, you know, chase the market right now. So now they're upgrading everything because they yeah. felt as if there was going to be an earnings recession. When you model. Do you look at any black swan events or potential for any black swan events? So when I'm modeling the earnings forecast for the S&P, I've tried to put in conservative forecasts, things that are reasonable. Um, So we've got margin contraction, whereas sell side numbers have kind of had flattish margins. Um, We've got GDP that's kind of bumping along slightly negative. We've actually stepped up our interest expense assumptions, assuming that companies are going to have a tough time with some of these debt burdens, given the rising rate environment. I'm not sure all that is baked in. We may end up being too conservative. I wouldn't quite say they're black swans, but it does allow us a constructive way to think about multiples and whether or not the market lows have made sense. 